What is up guys? It's your boy Rick. It's not pink, it's lightish red. Cock is here and today we've got some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just gone live revealing official information and so let's get started. So this week in Destiny 2 there was a few things going on. First off, the featured Grandmaster Nightfall Strike is the Devil's Lair, and this is kind of an important one because the Devil's Lair is generally considered to be on the easier side, but it does take a little bit longer. There's just a bunch of really safe places to hold out and so on. So I've done a guide on how to beat it, it's linked up above, and this is a great chance to get the Adept Uzume Sniper or the Adept Plug One Fusion, both of which are very, very good rewards. But additionally, Iron Banner is currently ongoing. Now that does mean that Trials of Osiris will not go live tomorrow. Every time Iron Banner is ongoing, Trials takes a hiatus. But something that you may have noticed, and this is something that Bungie just kind of made a secret update for, they didn't mention this really anywhere as far as I know, but they actually went and updated all of the Iron Banner armor. So now when Iron Banner is active, the Iron Banner logos present on that armor, as you can see, will have a fiery glow until Iron Banner goes away. That is actually super sweet, and it's very similar to the Trials logos changing color when you went flawless. And we used to have similar things in the past. If you got a high score in a Nightfall over like the weekend, you'd have a glow around your head at certain points, crazy stuff like that. So I'm kind of happy to see that they're bringing this back and especially with transmog you can have a really cool fiery effect for that week that iron banner is active so really glad they did this and let's see if more stuff gets this treatment moving forward However, moving on from there, I mentioned Trials of Osiris not being present this weekend, but last weekend, oh my goodness, Bungie and Trials caused so much controversy within the community. And that's because Bungie, in their continuing experimentation with matchmaking systems, which I want to go on record and say I'm not necessarily opposed to this as long as they're upfront and honest about the data and they're willing to change and admit their mistakes, I'm okay with them trying new things and trying to find the perfect matchmaking that's going to be the best for the most people. But last weekend, boy, it was a swing and a miss. They took away the flawless matchmaking pool and instead they made it win-based matchmaking. So that meant the more you had had wins on your card, you would match people with more wins on their cards. So essentially, if you wanted to grind the playlist and just keep playing, it would get more and more difficult. It also just distinguished wins and not flawless streaks. So if you're just a grinder and you've never been flawless, but you have 50 wins, you're gonna match the guy that's gone flawless like four times in a row, right? So that was another problem in and of itself. And a lot of the community got very upset, but of course we didn't know the actual numbers behind this. Bungie revealed that today. So, average matchmaking time was up by about 10 seconds, but if you were on the bleeding edge of win counts, your matchmaking times could easily be anywhere from 2 minutes to over 5 minutes. Also, the overall amount of games played was down by 33%. That's terrible. And the blowout rate, so the amount of 5-0 or I think 5-1 games, went up slightly to 28%. So usually they're sitting at around 25. So this crazy change to matchmaking, the win-based matchmaking, actually led to more blowouts overall, to more unfair matchmaking, which... I didn't expect. They also say solo play went up a bit and fire team play, either exclusively or part time, went down by about a third. Low to average skill players played about the same or a bit more, whereas high skill players played significantly less, with the highest skilled cohort playing two hours less on average than previous weeks, a number that was otherwise very consistent in most revamp weeks, as well as most weeks in the previous seasons. So Bungie says we're 
career, there are a few positives, even though they don't really mention any. Most of the data from last weekend was either negative or neutral. And combined with the feedback they got, they say, all right, we're not doing this again. They're saying they're going back to purely card-based matchmaking with a flawless pool for the foreseeable future. However, they do say tune in next week for a Trials Labs pre-brief and details on some other plans we have for the mode between now and the Witch Queen. So Bungie is not done experimenting with Trials of Osiris and in next week's TWAB, like they said, they're going to talk about the next Trials Labs. So Trials Labs has included stuff like the freelance solo playlist. We also had a Trials Labs that introduced the capture mode, and maybe this is something totally different. So that's gonna be pretty interesting. Overall, again, you can't fault Bungie for experimenting. If this new matchmaking had worked well, like that would have been great, but I'm very glad that Bungie admitted, hey, this was a disaster. All our metrics are pretty much down. We're gonna have to find something else. But moving on from there, it's been a while, but Bungie bounties are back. Now this is where certain community members will stream for an allotted time. And if you match on their team and help them win, or match against them and win, then you will get a very exclusive emblem showcased here. So Bungie revealed all of the times this is happening. This right here is just for North America. And there's a ton more of these charts for other locations like the UK, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, etc. I'm gonna let you guys go and check those out for yourselves. Of course, the TWAB is linked in the description of this video down below if you're interested. But moving on from there, a couple of days ago, the official Destiny 2 Twitter account tweeted something a little bit interesting. It was this tweet here. What are the most heroic Destiny 2 moments you've experienced? And they were asking the community to share those moments. They actually mentioned it again in the TWAB, saying whatever your story may be, all heroes are welcome. Shoot us a tweet tagged with hashtag Destiny 2 hero stories, we'd love to use them to inspire new players as they join Destiny 2 for the first time. So this is clearly part of some sort of like ad campaign. I really wouldn't be surprised if Bungie, especially leading up to the Witch Queen, is releasing like trailers made with these hero moments. And it's not a bad idea. Honestly, Destiny 2 gets a lot of bad press. I mean, recently with the dungeon pricing system and players being very upset about the fact that you had to buy the Witch Queen Deluxe Edition to gain access to the dungeons coming later in the year and you couldn't just buy them when they actually came out. It's a lot of bad press for Destiny 2. People don't hear the good things, so hopefully trying to, you know, talk about how fun the game actually is and it's not just a bunch of people getting mad, I mean, not all the time at least. Hopefully that goes well. And if you want to participate, of course, use that hashtag. And then guys, really the last thing to talk about is that we have a new set of Prime Gaming Rewards. Here they are. There is the Cup of Tea Exotic Emote, the Grateful Crane Exotic Sparrow, the Intrepid Shell Exotic Ghost Shell, and then the Technical Meltdown Legendary Ship. Actually, I lied. There's one more thing to talk about. Bungie at the very end of the TWAB says that we're gonna start to talk about sandbox changes in the next few TWABs. Of course, the huge 30th anniversary update comes on December 7th, and that contains a huge sandbox update. Uh, you know, Shatterdive is getting nerfed, the Vex Mythoclass is getting a little bit of a nerf, and so on. So expect the next few weeks and the next few TWABs, Bungie to start releasing and talking about exotic armor they're changing, exotic weapons they're changing, uh, archetypes they're changing. We're probably gonna have multiple weeks of balancing talk so definitely make sure you're subscribed to the channel because you don't want to miss that stuff often the meta changes dramatically when we get these kind of updates and so guys that's it for the video i hope you enjoyed and found this informative if you did please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video if you guys want to see more destiny 2 content similar to this don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button if you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity the best way is to follow me on twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.